Okay. So you don't, so you're not tempted to stop me at the critical moment. Okay. Carmen, for the sake of our audience, mm -hmm. have we ever met before? No. Would you swear under oath that you are the only person that knows which gun is loaded? I swear. In your mind, think about that loaded gun. Think about that number. Forget about the rest. Okay. In a loud, monotone voice, I want you to count from one to six. Okay. Count out loud, please. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ladies and gentlemen, did she give it away? Could you intuit which gun was loaded? Would you bet your life on that guess? Let's listen again. Carmen, count one more time in reverse from six to one. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Thank you. Carmen, we're left with guns four, five, and six. Would you count four, five, and six, please? Four, five, six. We're left with guns five and four. Would you say the numbers five and four? Five, four. And f one more time? Five, four. One more time. Five, four. Thank you very much. That was well amazing. Done. Aaron, my heart is in my mouth just like the rest of the audience. I don't quite believe what I've just seen. Carmen, you had his life yes. in your hands. His hands. How do you feel? It, it was uh, weird. I mean, my heart's racing. I didn't really... It's just, luckily I was blindfolded, so I, I don't know if I would have been able to get through that if I was actually watching. So, I'm glad we're scary. having this very conversation. Scary. I'm glad you're okay. Thank you. Thank Uri, you. did he impress you? Well, look, Iran, your performance created drama, danger, suspense, and you sort of seriously instilled in me the fear that you're going to get killed right here on live television. I think that you're taking a major risk every time uh, you, you do this feat. Uh, verdict, mind-blowing. Chris? Well, I want to applaud NBC for allowing a demonstration like this on because I did the ultimate demonstration with a real gun and I know what's at stake and I applaud you for doing it. Uh, I think it was the most dramatic thing of the evening. I think it was uh, a very nice presentation, very strong, and you did a great job. Thank you very much. Well, Chris and Uri have spoken, but remember, you have the final say about who becomes the phenomenon. If you think that Aaron deserves to stay in the competition, call 1-866-345-6703. You can also cast your vote at NBC.com. Voting starts at the end of the show. Also, it's your final chance to pick the symbol URI transmitted as the interactive mental challenge ends soon. Coming up, Jerry McCambridge makes a Did shocking prediction using members of our studio audience. What will his prediction be? Like Find out when we return. <laughs> this is Phenomenon. We're live and the polls are closed for Uri's mental challenge. We will be revealing the results very soon. Right now, let's meet our next competitor, Jerry McCambridge. The beginnings of what I do come from a very dark place in my life. I was put in an orphanage. I was kind of tossed aside as a baby. And then I was adopted by a loving family. And then all of a sudden, like overnight, it changed. My father left my mother. Why didn't I foresee this coming? So I've kind of always had these walls up, and that was something that drove me. 
I, growing up, felt the need to be able to control my mind, control my emotions. It was a survival technique for me. And that triggered me into wanting to control everybody else around me. What makes me amazing is the fact that I have a bunch of secrets that you don't. And I know things that you don't. I am the mentalist. Everybody else is a mentalist. I am the mentalist. Well, let's hope his confidence pays off. It is live and things do go wrong. It's Jerry McCambridge. When I perform, I like to use as many people as possible and have as much fun as possible. Now, I've already pre-selected six people to stand here with Carmen, but I need three more to help me out. We're going to select those people randomly. So I have a green disc here. I'd like you oh. to take it, and I'm sure you're very athletic. You yes, can toss I am. it. Yes, I'm good at this. Let's go. Okay. Choose somebody for me. Yeah. Oh, hello. If oh. you get, please stand up and stay where you are. Let's do that again because okay. that was worth a Another million bucks. Another one. There you go. Let's do one more for I'm the sake of... I'm good at this. It turns out I can do it. Okay, you hit oh. the same person twice. So, right. my dear, would you take it and toss it to somebody uh, just to toss make it, it as random as possible? Good. Would you stand, grab the board and stand off yeah, to the side? Sure, I'll be sure, back sure. with you in a moment. I have seven envelopes here. I'm going to quickly mix them up and give them to the lovely people that are here on stage to hold. If I give you the envelope, take it and just hold it up against your body until I ask you to do something with it. There you go. How are you? Good to see you. Who has the first flying disc? My friend, we're going to try a little experiment with phone books. I have four different phone books from around the United States here. You're going to figure out which book we're about to use. So give us any number. One, two, three, or four. And that's the one we'll use. Four. Fourth book. That is the uh, Greater Atlanta book. Thank you very much, sir. You can have a seat. Rachel, your job is just to check that out. Make sure that there's different phone numbers on all the pages and different page numbers. Who has number two? The second disc. Here's the deal. The book that she's holding there has 932 pages in it. You're about to tell her which page to randomly select a number from. So give us a number between 1 and 932. 333. 333. Thank you very much. While Rachel goes to that page, where's the final disc? How are you, sir? Doing great. That book there, there are four columns of phone numbers on every page. You're going to decide which column Rachel is about to choose a number from. Give us a number. One, two, three, or four. Let's go two. Two. Second column. You have it? Yes. I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to run it right down the page. Whenever you say stop, the number above my finger will be the one that we will use. Okay. We have a few guidelines that NBC asked us to follow. Number one, we're not going to work with the area code. Right. Number two, we're not going to give out the entire number. So you're going to choose any two of the numbers and in their place just say blank. Okay. So you'll only be given five numbers. Okay. Ross, I'd like you to write down the phone number nice and large as she calls it okay. out. But when she says blank, put an X in its place. Okay. Good enough. Got it. Here we go, Rachel. Uh, where are we? Uh, uh, 333. Uh, we're starting at the top of the second column. I'm coming down. Tell me when to stop. Stop. Right there. Take a peek. What are the first three digits above my finger? Forget the area code. Give one of them and yeah. it's a blank. Blank 32. Blank 32. Let's let Ross catch up. Yes. How are we doing, Ross? Great, thanks. Good. Okay. Give him the next nervous, four digits, but, but leave one out. 259 blank. 259 blank. How do we do, Ross? Great. Awesome. If you take the numbers in that book and all the other numbers and put them together, there's over 3 million numbers we could have just selected from. One person randomly chose the book, one person randomly chose the page, one person randomly chose the column. I couldn't figure out a way to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Random. Now, here's the deal. What do we have? Blank 32. 2591. I took seven envelopes, if you remember a moment ago, and put them on display here. In each envelope, I have a card with a number on it. Unfortunately, you're a blank, Carmen. I'm sorry. So we're going to pass on you. So we're going to work with you two. We're looking for a three and a two. Reach inside your envelope. Show everybody what number that you happen to have. There's the three and there's the two. Awesome. Thank you for that applause. I'll keep going. No, I'm teasing, of course. <laughs> Here we go. 259. You're the blank, so you just kind of stay there. 259. Guys, reach in, take them out. We're looking for a 2, a 5, and a 9. Oh, there we go. So not... Well, thank you. Not only did I figure out the number she chose, I also figured out the places she'd put the blanks. Reach inside your envelope, the two on the two end, because we're looking for two X's there. Show everybody what you have. There's one X. There's another X. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.